Film Review, 1000 Hands of the Guru at the 2016 Asian American International Film Festival. Bhutan, a tiny, beautiful country of the Thunder Dragon that's strewn across the majestic folds of the Himalayas. Like all Bhutanese, uh, I like to collect tankas, I like to view tankas. It, it gives you focus and can fulfill you spiritually. Uh, when an old tanka is lost, especially if it is a sacred art, it is a deep loss, not just for the owner, but for the entire nation. When a tanka is restored and reconsecrated by spiritual masters, it has a new life and it bestows blessings of the past and also, most importantly, it hands down to future generations a cultural legacy that is continued for many generations to come. The monks have been doing this for quite some time now and it's basically second to nature to them because Tanka is a part of their culture, their religion and their practices. It's like a story. People should understand it's a story that, you know, it's part of you and part of who you are as a Bhutanese. So I think in that way, I hope the next generation will understand it like that and not some, you know, just, just a painting that they pass by. Some royals crafted humanitarian images for themselves simply by attending a few charitable cocktail parties and looking good in Versace. Her Royal Highness Princess Ashi Kenshidenti Wang Chuk of Bhutan is different. The scholar and devout Buddhist practitioner works directly with monks and art restoration experts to preserve her nation's heritage as the executive director of the Thank Conservation Center. Art restoration is a job the princess is well qualified for. But it does not leave her any time for preening PR campaigns. Fortunately, her efforts and those of her colleague and teacher, Ephraim Medi Jose, are documented in Dobias Ryu Wijk's 1000 Hands of the Guru, which screens during the 2016 Asian American International Film Festival in New York. Thankas were essentially portable altars. In past centuries, thankas were essentially portable altars. They are sacred but they are intended to be used rather than filed away. Over time, they absorb wisdom and holiness as the focus of meditation and rituals. They can never be disposed of like common detritus, but they become faded and threadbare. With the support of Bhutan's royal family, Jose developed the systematized restoration regimen. At first, the monks did not get it, but the results were a revelation. Beyond her royal status, the Princess Ashi Ken was also Western educated and tutored in Buddhist teachings by some of Bhutan's most revered monks, making her a perfect choice to lead the center. Frankly, she and the charismatic Jose should be a publicist's dream, but the Buddhist nation is apparently a bit outside People magazine's beat. In fact, the thoughtful and camera-friendly duo directly elevate the straightforward documentary. Despite capturing some striking images, Ryu Wijk's approach is largely repertorial, with maybe a pinch of advocacy thrown in. However, Princess Ashi Ken's narration lucidly and compellingly explains the higher spiritual principles informing the center's work. She might even help viewers prepare for death. It is just nice to know the Thank Conservation Center exists in our world albeit in a distant corner. Ryu Wijk addresses the pressures of globalization and modernization that challenge Bhutan's traditional way of life, but there still seems to be a considerable place for contemplation and faith in the Himalayan nation. Smart and sensitive to its subjects and surroundings, the 65-minute 1000 Hands of the Guru is educational in a relaxed, 
easy-going way. Highly recommended for those who care about the preservation of arts and culture, it screens this Friday, July-22, at the Village East, as part of this year's AF, 1000 Hands of the Guru, documentary, director, Tobias Ryuwijk, running time, 1 hour, 5 minutes, release date, July 22nd, rated, 3, 5 stars out of 5.